true They knew what to do, what to do Our ancestors were scientists Yes, scientists of the spirit Our ancestors were
Peace and blessings. It's a pool and welcome. Right, good to see you again. On this Thursday night at the second day of the summer solstice. All right, I want to welcome, welcome everyone tonight, whether you're in our webinar room, uh, whether you're joining us on our Facebook uh, pages or on our YouTube channel. You know, it was way back in 1973 when our presenter tonight, Ra Unnefer Amen Shechem or Shechem of the Osaraset Society, uh, he squared the circle of time and introduced the community to the observance of the solstices, the winter solstice being the most critical time of year, the summer solstice, as well as the equinoxes. It's been 50 years this year. Uh, and now, nowadays, you know, a lot of people talk about the solstice, the solstice, and even commercialize the solstice. I heard a television guest, a television host, very famous person say uh, last week that the summer solstice was her favorite time of year because, you know, there was so much daylight so she could get all the things that she wanted to get done, done, you know. So uh, it's become a popular thing now. Uh, but, you know, we forget that this concept was introduced, or I should say reintroduced to the world through the work of uh, great uh, teachers of wisdom, uh, foremost, the Shechem Shechem Ra Unefer Amen. So I want to welcome you on this second day of the summer solstice. And it is a time of year when it's important to meditate. It's important to contemplate. It's a time of year to look back at uh, the goals that you set back in the winter solstice. Hopefully you were aware of that and not ca caught up in the holidays that were watered down from the holy days. And you were thinking about your 2023 and what you were going to accomplish. And uh, many of you on, on this call tonight, and I'd like you to put a one in the chat right now if you are brand new, if this is your first time here. Uh, on Comedic Legacies digital platform. And if this is your first time meeting uh, Ra Unnefer Amen, who is the founder of this company. He's the founder of the Asara Set Society. Welcome, Amy. Appreciate having you here tonight. Um, and that is a Pan-African spiritual organization. Xavier, welcome. We're here for you. Sit in the front row, right? Um, started in 1973. And it was founded on the principle that if the, uh, the great tradition that we found in the uh, Nile Valley civilization of Egypt, welcome Bashir Muhammad, uh, was so great, why aren't we living it, right? So a society dedicated to the living of those principles was formed around a great master teacher that you will get to meet tonight. Uh, for the first time, the three of you, welcome, and uh, everyone else that's here. But one of the things that, one of the great accomplishments was to reset the calendar, that we know what time it is. We know we're in the Tehuti cycle, for example, right now, and that we're at the summer solstice, which is a very important time for us to contemplate our direction in life. And uh, I think you're in the best place to do that tonight. Uh, you heard the summer solstice song, or the winter, the solstice song. Uh, one of the um, writers and performers on that track is one of our great queen mothers, Ordawat, and then Chas Ra and Kemet from our Washington, D.C. area. Right. And um, just beautiful track reminding us of the sacredness of the time. So tonight, we're going to talk about a very important subject. Tonight, we're going to delve into the heart of comedic spirituality, comedic cosmology, 
what was the philosophy, the philosophical underpinnings um, that built that great Nile Valley civilization and how do they apply to the challenges that we face uh, today, which is we need to re-civilize ourselves and we definitely need to contribute to the re-civilization of this world. So my name is M. Tehuti Kamo. I serve as an Orwa in the Osaraset Society, and I'm here on the Committed Legacy channel. If you're just joining us, if you're not aware, this digital platform that we have, um, that we're bringing you these webinars, uh, is part of our uh, new development with Committed Legacy to spread the ageless wisdom uh, to the corners of the earth. So you can hear this uh, podcast that we're doing tonight. You can hear that the recording of it on our SoundWise platform, as well as you can hear the one from Tuesday, if you missed it, a powerful uh, webinar that we had this past Tuesday and six other uh, lectures by our, our uh, presenter, Ra Unefer Amen. So if you haven't already, what you want to do is download the SoundWise app uh, on your uh, Google Play Store or your Apple Store. You can see the icon there. When you put in SoundWise, right, uh, there's two applications that come up. You want the orange one uh, with that logo, the light bulb with the headset on that. And it's free. So download that tonight and then just search for Comedic Legacy, K-A-M-I-T-I-C, and then you can get access to those free webinars. It's probably some 12 hours of great information to help you get uh, an understanding of comedic spirituality. So with that said, we have an important topic tonight. You can see that we have a comedic cosmology and the Pout Neturu, the comedic tree of life we'll be talking about. And then next week, Tuesday and Thursday, we'll be continuing this series all around helping you to understand the importance of the practice of comedic meditation, the power of comedic meditation as it's been presented now in a digital form, in a form that's totally accessible to you right in the palm of your hand on your smartphone through Ma'at, the 11 laws of uh, wealth, of health, wealth, and success, which is a digital course. Uh, so we'll talk more about that at the end. But at this point, I want to bring to you the founder of Asar Set Society and of Comedic Legacy, the author of over 40 books on spirituality, including Ma'at, the 11 Laws of God, and the creator of the Ma'at, 11 Laws uh, online, on-demand meditation course, Ra Unefer Amen, and we refer to him affectionately and respectfully with an ancient Egyptian title, the Shechem or Shechem, and we greet him with the ancient words of peace and power, Anetrarak, Shechem or Shechem, Ra Unefer Amen. Ragadapu, young man. <laughs> His Royal Majesty of Philadelphia. Thank you so much. Thank you. So uh, welcome, uh, Shechem and Shechem. Again, um, the work that you've been doing, of course, for 50 years, but over this last uh, few months, the, uh, the rave reviews are coming in. People are, are deeply uh, gratified uh, with the adaptation of the technology that's making this available and lots of great results as well. So we appreciate you being here. We're excited about these uh, four webinars that you have scheduled, and we can't wait to get into it. So tonight's subject um, is the tree of life, the tree of life known as the Pout uh, Neteru. So could you uh, start off? I know you have some, some information to share with us. Could you start off uh, by just introducing us to what is the tree of life and um, what is the significance of this knowledge to people today? Yeah. Well, the tree of life is a tree diagram. A tree diagram that 
identifies the components of the spirit and their hierarchical position and relationship to each other. You see that? Mm -hmm. So in order to study life effectively, you have to have the information that make up the body of spirituality. You have to have that information presented in an orderly manner. You have to identify all parts of the spirit, the mind, the psyche, the way doctors identify through anatomy and physiology, the different parts of the physical body, you see? Uh, so imagine that you are a teacher of medicine, okay? You're gonna teach medicine, but you don't have, you know, an anatomy system or a physiology system. You see that? Mm -hmm. It will not be able to, I, to correlate, you know, what part of the spirit corresponds to uh, certain illnesses, you know, responsible for certain functions, you know, what part of the physical body you must treat. In other words, um, so anatomy gives us a structure of the physical body. You know, all the muscles and bones and tissues, where the liver is, what it does. So what it does is physiology now. You see that we have, you know, the structure, that's anatomy, the function, that's physiology. Mm -hmm. So it enables us to understand how the body works, you know, how to teach it, to teach others, you see, how to correct the problems and so forth. Yes, if somebody comes to you with a chest pain, that pain could be, you know, costal chondroitin, meaning in the ribs, or it mm -hmm. could be a pain in the heart, mm -hmm. you see? Uh, and that pain in the heart could be a, an impending heart attack or just simply gas pressing from the digestive system upwards into the chest cavity, mm -hmm. you see that? So the thing is, is that we can talk intelligently about the body and its functions, its disorders, and what to do for it through the science of anatomy and physiology. When it comes to spirituality, people today, lots of teachers and students today are not aware. They are not aware. Can you hear me, Wilson? Well, yes. Yes. They're not aware that there is the counterpart of anatomy and physiology in the spiritual science. Mm -hmm. You see that? And the, the counterparts of anatomy, you see, is, you know, the tree of life. Okay? The name tree of life, you know, came about somewhere around 600 BC when the Hebrew Bible was written. Mm -hmm. You see that? In other words, you know, the, one of the two trees that Adam was told not to touch. One was the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, and the other one was the tree of life. You see that? Mm -hmm. That's explained in Genesis. And we don't hear any more about it anymore at all in the Old Testament. The next time we hear talk about the tree of life is in the last book, which is appended to the New Testament. Mm -hmm. You see that? The last book of the New Testament, where St. John uh, says that the tree of life, you know, will be uh, the only item that will survive the ends of days, mm. along with Jesus referred to as, you know, the sheep, okay? And uh, that this tree of life, will the, the fruits of this tree will be the food for the nations that survive the mm. end of day. You see that? And the leaves will be the medicine for the people. Mm -hmm. So that is a phenomenal level of importance given to the tree of life. You see that? Yes. So unfortunately, nowhere in the Old Testament or the New Testament is the tree of life explained what it really is, what it does, or how it helps us to understand ourselves, the spirit, and life itself. Mm. You see that? The teachings about the tree of life was now hidden in what 
spiritual science called Kabbalah from the Hebraic tradition. Mm -hmm. And lots of people studying Kabbalah don't know that there's also a Christian Kabbalah. <laughs> you, you see that? Okay. And, uh, you know, notice that it's based on the teachings of Pythagoras and, you know, other pundits and so on. Mm -hmm. So what you got to understand is that if you embark, if you're going to build a house, it's very helpful to have a blueprint. You see that? Mm -hmm. Okay. If you want to uh, try to fix a car, it's very important to have a blueprint and to know something about how the different parts function. You know, for me, if you open up the hood of a car, I don't know what is, you know, piston from Adam. Mm -hmm. You see that? Uh, on what each part does and so forth. So I better not try to fix anybody's car. Mm -hmm. you see that? I, I will make things or trying to fix my car. And that's the problem that students of spirituality have when they want to use spirituality to fix themselves, to improve their lives, is that nobody gave them the counterpart of the spiritual anatomy and the spiritual physiology. You see that? We never got the owner's manual. <laughs> you did, there you go. You didn't get the owner's manual, you know, identifying all the different parts and what to do, how to, you know, troubleshoot mm -hmm. and what to do when, it, you know, but it has to be based on the structure and functions of the components of the spirit. So what I'm going to do tonight is I'm going to give a simplified, you know, uh, scale down understanding of spiritual anatomy and spiritual physiology, AKA the partner or the tree of life. I see that. So it's important for people to translate, you know, ancient teachings to contemporary words and phrases and concepts and so on. This yeah. is what I did in all my books. While lots of people were able to benefit from these books because I gave accurate and clear translation of the concepts, you know, from the ancient committee, you know, like if you go into the, the, the books by the Egyptologists, they say the partner teru is uh, the company of gods. Mm. You don't get that it is the preced precedent for the tree of life. Mm. You don't get the understanding that the partner teru is a, is a diagram, a hierarchical diagram of the parts of the spirit and how they connect with each other the same way that the, the, the diagram for how a car works, especially today's cars with all the computerized parts, whatever, you better have a schematic diagram that you can understand if you're going to try to fix your car mm -hmm. or anybody's car for that matter. You see that? Mm -hmm. So uh, I put together a little, you know, um, PowerPoint to help people get a visual for understanding uh, today's topic. So can we bring up today's slide, the first slide? Sure. And as we do that, uh, second by second, for those who are just being exposed, can you translate what you mean when you're saying that you're saying the term pout neteru? Well, pout is 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 has to do with the hierarchical organization. You see that, mm -hmm. okay? And uh, none of the Egyptologists gave a proper translation, you know, of the word pout. You see that. Okay, so um, the, the alt from the in the pot corresponds to you know an image. You see yeah. that, okay? And uh, but you, you will have to get into to uh, your, many comedic books are, are words, especially spiritual yeah. words don't have a linear one to one definition, you know, as we have in Western language. The comedic language is very much like the Chinese where a word can have one to many, you see, um, subtle meanings, you see that, mm -hmm. okay? Because it's, the comedic language is very metaphoric, you know, uh, and, and because that's why this, the, 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 the script that best conveys it, you know, is a hieroglyphic, meaning a visual image, you know, script, you see that? Mm -hmm. So again, Paul, the best thing is, is a, it's a diagram, you see, mm -hmm. that shows you the different parts of your spirit, which, you know, which you call the neteru, you mm -hmm. see that, which people uh, translate as gods and deities. But neteru 
is the uh, origin of the uh, Latin word natura, mm -hmm. you see, which gives us the English word nature or the forces of nature, you know, mm -hmm. the intelligences of nature. Mm -hmm. So that's a very beautiful word, natura, neteru, natura, mm -hmm. nature. So the study of the part natura is to study nature, nature. The nature of our self, our spirit. You see that. So let's go to the first yes, slide. Wonderful. So here okay. we go. So the first thing that we have to do to, to begin to talk about ourselves and about life is that we have to understand our being. Our being is com composed of you know five specific you know parts, self. Okay, which we separate from, you know, uh, divine spirit, higher mind, lower mind, and the psych and the, and the physical body, which are really one. You see that? Or, or we could separate psych from body, but it doesn't make much sense to do that. So the thing is that self is who we are. Self is that consciousness that we are. Okay, that consciousness, who we are, meaning that when you get to the essence of who you are, you see, it is consciousness. Consciousness itself, meaning that you are not, you are not an entity that is conscious. You are consciousness itself, meaning that, you see, another way of saying it is that, you know, that which you are, that who you are, you know, is devoid of energy and matter. It is that great void, you see that, that uh, is spoken of in many spiritual teachings. And one of the spiritual goals, you know, especially through meditation, the yoga meditation, where you seek the highest level of spirituality, which is called asamprajnata sarvikalpa samadhi, meaning the, the, the highest state of internalization that goes beyond, you know, parts, and, and measure and rhythm and time. Then that's as a sarvikalpa, you know, asam prajnata, asam prajnata. Prajna means to, to be perceived, meaning that who you are is beyond perception. Who you are cannot be perceived, yet it perceives everything in this world. You see that the, the ancient Egyptian in one of the books, the book of uh, the, the, the pyramid text of, of Unas, you know, the, the king, states in the text that nobody knows me, nobody knows my name, not even my mother has seen me. And when everything in this world is gone and perishes, I will remain. <laughs> Meaning that consciousness is devoid of energy and matter, which is a very pregnant and profound understanding. So matter, I mean, the self, consciousness, functions in this world through the divine spirit, through the higher mind, through the lower mind, and through the psych and physical body. So for you to understand yourself, you are an immaterial, you know, entity we call consciousness. You're not conscious. You are consciousness itself. Don't separate the two because, you know, there's a self-centering meditation that I've introduced to many of my students, and I'm yet to write a book on it. It's a very easy thing to do, but it might take you a million years to understand <laughs> before you can do it. Uh, you are a consciousness, okay, that learns about itself through the divine spirit. You see that, okay? And through the lessons about itself that is stored in the divine spirit, it passes it on to the higher mind that passes on to the lower mind and the two uh, aspects of the mind, the higher and the lower mind, work together to program the psyche and the physical body in order to make life in the world, you know, uh, to make it happen. You see that? So you got to understand that you are a consciousness functioning to divine spirit. Okay? Consciousness in many teachings is, conf is confused with the mind. The mind is not conscious. There's no such thing as a, as a conscious mind and a subconscious mind. All mind operates 
below and beneath and away from you. That is consciousness. So you have to, and a lot of confusion, you know, comes with a spiritual teacher is not being able to teach spirituality properly because they confuse consciousness with mind. You see, mind doesn't make you conscious of anything. If, if mind was conscious, then you would be the mind. But no, you, mind is a tool that you use. It's an energy substance matter tool that you use to communicate information. You see that? To create symbols to direct your forces to manifest things in this world. So let's move on to the next slide. So here we have, you know, the four higher aspects of the spirit. The Amen faculty, which correspond to zero on the tree of life. Okay, it's the is the part of the the um is that infinite substance, that infinite and eternal substance that you modify as your thoughts, as your psyche, as your body, and all things in this world are transformations of Amen. The word Amen means that which is hidden, that which is concealed. You see that. Then we have the Oser faculty. Okay, uh, you can see the arrows pointing to the card, you know, the white hat with the flail and the crook. Okay, and um, and yes, it is painted in brown skin as it is in the pyramid walls. Then we have the Tehute faculty, okay, and then we have the sacred faculties. So these are the four higher, you know, aspects of your being, which we call the divine spirit. You see that? And this, this is where, you know, your the, the regulation, the, the, the laws are stored. This is where the regulation of your life takes place. If these four divine spiritual entities are not awakened and developed, then your life, your behavior will be very, you know, immature and immoral and things of this nature. When you find all of the, you know, the, the, the things that is wrong in the world, it's because these four higher parts of the spirit, the divine spirit, have not been awakened. And as long as you haven't awakened these four faculties, no amount of information, no amount of philosophy, no amount of spiritual doctrine will make you, you know, behave in a moral manner in a correct manner. So when you talk about spiritual science and spiritual training, you're talking about teaching, you know, uh, the individual how to awaken and develop and use these four faculties in the spirit. We'll come back to this. Let's go to the next slide. So coming down, uh, the first slide showed the, the neteru, the positive spirit, that correspond to Amen, Oser, Sacred, and Tehute. Now, these correspond to four, five, and six, meaning Ma'at, Heru, Kuhuti, you know, and Heru. These are the three faculties of what we call the higher mind, the higher aspects of the mind. And these are the parts of the mind that, you see, that store the knowledge that you acquire from the four higher parts of the, of, the, of the spirit that we spoke about just a while ago. Meaning that when you get, when you begin to meditate and your spirit begins to reveal to you truths, these truths are stored in the Ma'at faculty. You see that? And the implementation of justice in your life comes from the Herikahuti, you know, uh, faculty. You see that? And then we come over to the, come down to the Heru faculty, okay? Uh, that's where your human will, I, I, I would not say your human will, meaning the earthly will is stored, you know, in the Heru part of the spirit. That's your freedom to choose to function in any way you choose to function. You see that? Of course, 
you have the freedom but not the right. You see, it's only when you function according to spiritual law that things will go right in your life and in the world. So the three, you know, faculties of the higher mind is Ma'at, Herukuhuti, and Heru. So you can see the hierarchy. This is four, five, and six, and in the preceding slide, we showed you the faculties at zero, one, two, and three. Now we're gonna to go to the lower mind in the next slide there. So now we have seven, eight, nine, and 10. That's, that's the lower part of your being. Seven, eight, and nine is the lower part of the mind. And 10, of course, is the psych and the physical body. You see that? So, um, The slide that we just came from, the higher part of the mind works through abstraction, abstract thoughts. And this, that's, you know, very good. That, that's the part that deals with abstract ideas and concepts because that's the way the law is encoded, okay? So we come down now to the lower mind, okay? Seven, eight, and nine, meaning the head of Sebek and Oset, okay? And, um, you know, it deals with concrete thinking, okay? And, and that's where we are evolutionary for most people. They, they deal with concrete ideas. So they take things literally. You know, they are not, you know, and a lot of the spiritual concepts and spiritual teachings are conveyed in abstract language, which unfortunately is brought down to the concrete level. For example, the idea of the oneness of God, you see, uh, which the oneness of God is an abstract uh, idea. You see that? So meaning when you speak about the one God, and that one God could be the sun. It could be, you know, um, you know, it could be an animal. It could be money. It could be whatever, you see. But the oneness of God, this is not speaking about the entity God, but you see how God unifies all things. So, you know, that's why people who say they worship God, you know, have no problem hating other people. You see that? Because they worship the one God as opposed to God's oneness with all. You see that? If, if you are worshiping God's oneness with all, then you cannot hate other people. So the idea is the oneness, not the one God. You see, if, if you're worshiping a one God, yet hating other people, then you see, you have making, you, you're deluding yourself. So when you study, okay, uh, the intellect, the, the, the spiritual side of intellectual teachings, is to awaken the Hetero faculty, the Sebek faculty, and the Oset faculty, as well as awakening the Geb, which is the psychical, the 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 the, 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 the uh, container. You see the reservoir of the psyche. Now in the Kabbalah, the psyche is called the nefesh, meaning the breath body. You see that. So what you call the psyche or the soul is that part of the, the lower part of the spirit that is nurtured primarily by the breath. Such, you know, studies as Qigong, you know, and breath work and so on. Let's go to the next slide. So here I want to connect, you know, the uh, part neteru, the four higher parts of the spirit to you know, the five aspects of being. So again, don't forget that the self takes on, you know, the, the self functions through all 11 faculties of the spirit. It functions through all parts of the spirit. And according to what part of the spirit the self is functioning, because it is, that will determine how well the self is informed. For example, if the self, okay, uh, is functioning in the divine spirit, meaning spheres zero, one, two, and three. That's Amen, Oser, Tehute, and Seker. You can see them here in the illustration. You see that? If that is 
you know, where the self is, it has access to these faculties, then the self, you, are spiritually enlightened. You see that? If you don't, if you have not awakened these higher parts, then the self will be ignorant. You see that? So you got to understand that the self, you see, uh, does not possess information of its own. The self is, it has to retrieve the information from, this, from the spiritual side of the divine spirit, from the spiritual side of the higher and lower mind. You see that? So let's go to the next slide. So now we have, you know, the higher mind and the neteru, the neteru that corresponds to it. The higher mind correlates to Ma'at, Herukahuti, and Heru. So when the self is dwelling and has access to the higher mind, okay, then you are receiving communications from Ma'at you know, from Herukuhuti and from the Heru part within you. You see that to help you regulate your life. You see, Ma'at, number four. You see there, the lady with, you know, um, the scales. You see, meaning that Ma'at is the regulator, the harmonizer, and this ordering part of the higher mind. And it works through ideas of philosophy and morality, you know, and ethics and things of that nature. Eruko Huti helps to regulate by enforcing divine law as well as the law of man. And then Heru, of course, you know, its function is to regulate the lower mind, which we will look at in the next slide. So here we have Heru, Sebek, and Oset that are regulated by Heru. When the meditation science through which Heru regulates, Heru meaning the imagination and the actions of the imagination. Your, your, the imagination can lead you astray. So can Sebek, which is your verbal intellect. You see that? And then now uh, Oset is the trance state. You can go into positive trance and negative trance, but the regulator of the functions of the lower mind is Heru. You see that? And the science that the comedic science for regulating these three aspects of the lower mind, we call it meneb. They say that meaning stabilizing through the will. Men is stability and ebb is the will. So here you find that through the partner, you're learning a whole lot more than the Western world can teach you about the higher and the lower mind. They say that. In this, in this slide here, we also have Geb, which is the psych or the soul, and the body. You see that? So the lower mind, okay, as well as the higher mind, enables the self to program and reprogram the psych or the soul and the physical body through programming the psych, meaning that your illnesses, your physical performance, can be repaired and 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 can be regulated by the self using the divine spirit to enlighten and uplift the higher and lower mind to program the psych. Let's repeat that so that you can get it. Meaning that self, you, consciousness, with the power to will, meaning to initiate actions in your mind and in your and in your psyche that's what that is who you are okay you're there's nothing inside of you that can be ignorant or stupid or crazy or whatever you because the self consciousness is devoid of energy and matter it doesn't store information it works through the information you know centers of the being which is the divine spirit the higher mind the lower mind, the psyche, and the body. Okay, so when the psyche, you see, becomes, when the self, you see, becomes functional in the divine spirit, you see that, in the self faculty, the amen faculty, the tehute, the sacred, then 
you can pass information on to the higher mind, meaning um, Ma'at, Heruguhuti, and Heru, to then regulate the lower mind, to enlighten and uplift the lower mind. You see that? Because the lower mind thinks concretely, okay, and it has to be regulated by the higher mind with abstract thinking. You see that? Okay? And when you have the the enlightened higher mind and lower mind, you know, in operation, then you can reprogram the psyche and the body to give you a good mundane life. Let's go to the next slide, please. So let us get a little deeper into it here. I hope you can see, you know, can, can, is there, can you show? There you go. Thank you very much. Uh, make it a little bit more legible. So here we find the divine spirit, you see, um, is the present stage of evolution. Started about some 50,000 years ago, okay? And and the, the part of the brain, okay, and I said man has man, man's forebrain. As a matter of fact, let me, well, I'll come back and explain the, the forebrain concept later on. So right now, mankind, is at the beginning of the evolution of the divine spirit, okay? Meaning that a, a, a very startling secret of the Hebrew Kabbalists, okay, is the fact that not everybody has a spirit, okay? We all have a soul, and because we all have a soul or a psyche, People think they confuse the soul and sight with spirit, so they think that there's a spirit there. No, not everybody is in touch with, you know, um, that they have experienced that there are consciousness that is totally separate from what it is conscious of, which is a spiritual goal. One of the highest spiritual goal of your spiritual work is the experience. You see the consciousness of being conscious and nothing else. You see that? That's the highest samadhi of yoga teaching called, you know, uh, samadhi samprajnata sarvikalpa nirvana. You see that? Okay, it's not nihilism or extinction or whatever. It is the detachment of consciousness from all objects of consciousness. And once, once that is achieved, Okay, and, it, and then now you are conscious of being conscious, and that's the only experience you have for a few seconds, which will feel like an eternity. And when you renew that experience a number of times, you will, you will remain fully liberated from emotions and sensuality and all the things that can capture your being. You see that? So this faculty just started you know, uh, it was just scheduled by evolution some 50,000 years ago. The knowledge of working the divine spirit, you see that, through the prefrontal lobe, which Egyptian called, you know, the Kente, you see that, uh, was perfected in Egypt, and the knowledge was passed on to other traditions in China, the Hebrews, the Muslims, and other people. So they are doing their best you know, of the understanding of these teachings to bring it to their followers. Everybody's having different results from it. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, I prefer to go back to the source as opposed to translations and transliterations of the teachings to each his own. Then we have the higher mind, which is also a present stage of evolution, okay? And it works through the prefrontal lobe and the cerebral cortex. You see that, meaning left and right hemispheres of the brain. Okay, but it is fo focused on the prefrontal lobe. When the prefrontal lobe is not well developed, as it is with 95% of people in the world today, you know, we have a lack of ethics. We have people making a mockery of democracy okay, making a mockery, mockery of religion and philosophy and government ideas and things of that nature. 
you know, interesting thing that President Obama is going back to Greece, he says, which was the, the homeland of democracy. People, lots of people don't know that, you know, um, ancient Greece was made up of thousands of separate city-states, which were constantly at war with each other. And for, as a practical thing, there was never democracy in Egypt, I mean, in, in Greece, just the idea of it. I think that is too small to read, thank you. Okay, so the, the, that part of the brain is only like 150, you know, thousand years, you know, old. Now we come to the lower mind, which is the cerebral cortex, which is 10 million years old, and most of it is programmed by, um, you know, the, the, the hominids. I think there's a little mistype of here. Okay, so um, that is why a lot of people today in the world, okay, uh, that lower mind, that cerebral cortex is dominated by the psyche, which is a, a inheritance from the animal kingdom. And that is why lots of people want to settle all the differences through physical violence. You see that? As opposed to through philosophy and religion and spiritual, spirituality. So you got to understand, you know, from this presentation here, is that the improvement of your person the improvement of your social network and in the world, you see, is doesn't come from teaching them morality, teaching them philosophy. You have to, along with teaching them these things here, you have to awaken their faculties and the parts of the brain. For example, if you are drinking alcohol, you know, um, and the CDC, they finally came out and said that there is no small amount of alcohol that is safe because alcohol is a solvent. As soon as you drink it, it begins to dissolve, you know, brain tissue, you know, because, you know, it, it dissolves fat. It dissolves, you know, the, the, dissolves fatty matter. Most of the brain is fatty matter. It begins to dissolve, you know, um, neurotransmitters, you know, and neurons and things of that nature. So if you're drinking alcohol, you're damaging the prefrontal lobe. So it doesn't matter how much book on spirituality you're, you're reading because your spiritual salvations will come from the activity of these spiritual faculties and not from the information you are trying to put into the brain. So I hope you understand that. So <clears throat> the purpose of this slide is to let you understand is that you don't have one brain, you have four separate brains four brains that were evolved, you know, at different times, okay? So we're going to start talking about the brains from the lowest, earliest, you know, uh, to the highest, right? So we have, uh, no, let's go back, let's go back. So we have the, the earliest and oldest brain is the reptilian brain. That's a, it's a brain the size of your thumb, and it sits right underneath, you know, your, the nape of your neck, where your neck, where your neck meets, you know, your low, the higher part of your back, right? So, and it's called the reptilian because this brain makes up ninety-nine percent of the brain of reptiles. You see that? That's why reptiles, when they're born, they don't have need to learn how to survive. Their, their brain, they're born with their full survival kit in activity. They know what to eat, what the enemies are, how to run away, and da da da, -da and so forth. But because they have so much of the brain program, <clears throat> there's no room for learning. You see that? You cannot teach a snake or a tortoise or whatever, turtle or whatever, to do things, they come fully loaded. You see that? So that reptilian brain works through the psyche. You see that? All right, the soul, and it's in, that. That's the, the the that reptile. You know, is the target of that statement in the Old Testament. We're talking about how the the serpent. You know, um, 
came and made Adam and Eve sin. You see that? And, you know, a lot of people want to argue, was that time ever that serpent speak? <laughs> okay. And they're talking about the reptilian brain in your brain, the lowest part of your brain. It's actually a different part because in the, during the reptilian, you know, period, which is like some 500 million years ago, that's the only brain that was in existence, meaning that the, the higher brains, meaning the midbrain and the the uh, the cerebral brain, the cerebral cortex, there were no creatures with the midbrain, with the cerebral cortex, none of that. The only brain that was in existence was the brain that was, you know, uh, packaged in reptiles. Unfortunately, that brain is, is still packaged in our body. You see that? And when you find somebody that is just, you know, devoted to selfishness, you know, has no inkling of selflessness, can only think about themselves, is because that reptilian brain within them, that, you know, is fully in, in control of their life. You see that? Then now, sitting on top of the reptilian brain is the mammalian brain, which comes into manifestation, evolutionary speaking, around uh, 250. 250 million years ago, the age of the, the that's when the, the, the mammals entered evolution. You see, but what made them different from the reptile is that they had a brain that sat like a cap over the uh, reptilian brain. And it's also called the limbic brain. Okay, and, and if you look at the difference between mammals and reptiles, we find that mammals are more socially developed. You know, they, they, they work more as, as a social group and things of that nature. They teach their young, you know, they exchange through, you know, feelings and emotions and, and, and they work to cooperate in hunting, building social units. And that is the, comes from the mammalian brain, the limbic brain. But unfortunately, there's nothing that is ethical and moral about the reptilian brain and the mammalian brain. So that's why you can find people who, okay, uh, are functional, affectionately, yet at the same time, they can commit the most egregious, you know, wrongs and evil because the mammalian brain doesn't have, you know, the means of moral teachings and thinking. You see that it is amoral. So that is why it will do things that will seem contradictory. You know, a man loves a woman, yet he kills her to keep somebody else from loving her. He's acting out of a mammalian brain. No amount of information is gonna change his behavior. You have to awaken the brain above the uh, mammalian brain, which is the prefrontal lobe, not even the cerebral cortex, okay, which is the intellectual brain will save such a person. So we have the cerebral cortex, left and right hemisphere. This part of the brain is about, you know, about some, I would say some 10 million years, you know, uh, I'm sorry, about some, you know, uh, 150 million, uh, 50,000 years, you know, in existence. You see that? And it is that brain that begins, where, where man now begins uh, to make tools, okay? Uh, perhaps even in certain ways earlier than that, and it becomes more, more symbolic and things of that nature. But you got to understand that the, the, the most important brain, the latest brain to come evolutionary, meaning, you know, it's about, uh, they will say, some people will say, you know, about some 50,000 years in existence, meaning before that, there were no creatures that had this prefrontal lobe. That's why I say they're separate brains. You see that? And uh, that prefrontal lobe enables you on the lowest level, on its lowest level, to think abstractly and to plan way ahead in a, you know, and to be moral, but in its most advanced stage to be spiritual. When you have a fully developed prefrontal lobe, then you can now awaken and work with the four higher 
powers of the spirit. So I just want you to understand that there are different parts of your being. You see that you have to learn to identify, you see, and understand, you know, how they contribute to your behavior. You see that if you are dealing with, you know, a selfishness and very antisocial emotions, you might hurt others and physical and things of nature. You're dealing with a behavior that's come from a, a brain within you that's been around for 500 million years. You see that when you see a nation, you know, can go to war with another nation and extinguish, you see that, ethnically cleanse. You see, the people who are doing that, they're functioning from the reptilian and mammalian brain. You see that no amount of doctrine and philosophical indoctrination, no matter how often these people, you know, go to the spiritual assemblies, they you will not truly change their behavior. You see that? They will be totally self-contradictory. You know, one day they will be religious, and the next four or five days they will be totally irreligious. Why? Because they're functioning from parts of the brain that, you see, that control that is making them act that way and the part of the brain and the spirit that will redeem them are not functional. So that is why spirituality is just not simply an information delivery system. That's why we use mantras, breathing techniques, the science of colors. You know, you, you, you awaken your brain faculties and you awaken spiritual and psychical faculties through sound, you know, the energy, different sounds produce, the energy different colors produce, the energy different perfumes, you know, um, produce to affect these deep things within you. So let's go to the next slide. Okay, so we find here that the will, you know, which is you, your consciousness and will. When we, if, they, if somebody were to ask you and says, can you describe yourself? If you said something other than I am consciousness will, then you are not talking about yourself. If you say something like, well, I, I'm a shy person, you know, no, that which is shy within you is a person, not the self. The word person, persona, is that name, the word per in persona, it means through. Sona means sound, meaning that this is a very interesting word that was created, you know, a long time ago, several thousand, about, I would say 2,000 years ago, that the Roman people got from the ancient Egyptians. Per means through, and sona means sound. So a person is a vehicle through which a sound is coming through. Per sona, like in percolate. You see that? Like in performance. You see that? So persona, person, is a vehicle through which a sound. What sound? A mantra, meaning, you know, in some traditions, you know, everybody's name, you see, was considered not just simply a tap to identify somebody, but an energy complex that will help that person, you know, achieve his or her destiny. That's why the name is very important in non-Western traditions. And that is why people change their name as they go through spiritual initiation and so on. <clears throat> the Egyptian kings and queen mothers had five different names. You see that? And they had secret names that they use only in the temple, you know, names that touch even closer and more, more deeply to their psyche and things of that nature. So you got to understand that you are consciousness will. Consciousness is the cognitive, perceptive side of you, and will is the active side of you. You see that? The action that you are capable of is to initiate thought processes. That's the only thing that you do, initiate thought processes, initiate you know, action. You see that, but there's nothing in you, the self consciousness, that is capable of carrying out what it initiates. You see that? So you initiate by declaring 
a thought declaring an image that is then followed by the mind, the psych, and the body. So in this, in in this, um, the bottom part of this picture, ignore the top. Okay, this was the old slide that I copied from. What is important here, just the bottom part. So the self, okay, affects the mind through the spirit. You see that? And the mind directs the psyche. And the psyche governs the physical body and the social, the physical social environment. This is the master key for you to understand how to correct things in your life. You see that? Okay? So the course, can we go back to uh, the, 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 the four higher spirits of the, uh, the four higher powers of spirit? There you go. The course, Ma'at, the 11 laws of health, wealth, and success. Okay? The most important part of this course are the first four, you know, higher parts of the spirit. You see that? Once you awaken these four parts of the spirit, it might take you four months of, you know, uh, concentrated work. Okay? I would say half an hour meditation every day. You know, with another half an hour of contemplation and thinking and, you know, and, and keeping notes and studying and things of that nature. Okay. And through these webinars, we're helping you to understand better the course. But once you get these four IO powers of the spirit awakened and developed, <clears throat> you would experience a 10,000 fold improvement in your life. You see that. Okay. The amen, when you perfect amen, it will take you more than four months. But when amen is perfected, you will be able to be at peace, no matter what challenges you're going through. When you're working or serve, you will be able to remain one with people that act in, that take a position of enmity towards you. Because you want to maintain your oneness with God. You see that? Because it is your oneness with God that will put you allow you to share in God's omniscience and God's omnipotence to resolve your problem. So if you remain one with the wrong, with a transgressor, meaning you're not seeking harm for the, the transgressor, you're not rewarding them either, but you are refraining from seeking, you know, raw, uh, harm to them, okay? When you think about them, you think of their redemption. You see that? Okay, you cannot save these people from, you know, uh, reaping what they're sown. That's between them and God. You want to maintain your oneness with all, meaning even with a transgressor. Why? Because that enables you to share in Tehute, God's omniscience, enable to share with sacred, God's omnipotence. You see that? So while when I'm sharing in God's, omniscience and omnipotence, I have no fear, no concerns about the wrongdoer. So these are the first four parts of the spirit that you want to master in this course, the 11 laws of health, wealth, and success. You know, <clears throat> the amen part of spirit. Uh, after a month or two or three, when you become better, better, better at remaining at peace, you're going to find that a lot of illnesses that you have, okay, will go away, will be, you know, removed. Because it is your negative emotions that a man addresses that is making you sick or keeping you sick. You will find that your, your wisdom, your, 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 your ability to, your cognitive ability will increase tremendously from the holistic nature of a man or sir, and the divine, you know, um, information and intuition that you receive from Tehute. You see that? Once you learn to align your destiny, your life objectives, once you learn to make it serve others, serve the world. Some people, lots of people are seeking goals in life without identifying, you know, how can I help you know, make life better for others through my success. 
that's a question that you will formulate in the sacred. That's that the third sphere, you see there, uh, the hawk headed, seated man with the flail and the crook. You see that? When you, in somehow, you know, dedicate what you want to accomplish in life, you want it to make the world a better spiritual place. Just not better financially, but spiritually. Lots of the people want to do things financial, but they can still corrupt or do nothing to the corrupt nature in man. So when you learn to understand the divine plan and you help to promote it through the things you're seeking and doing in this world, you are going to share in God's awesome, you know, omnipotence. Let's go to the next slide. Okay, we have Ma'at Rikuhuti Heru. Okay, when you go move on to lessons five, six, and seven, okay, um, you will find that you will understand the Ma'at 11 laws much better. There are two ways so that you're going to understand this law. You're going to understand it by studying the course and the book, Ma'at 11 laws of God. But then all oh, you're going to achieve a tremendous higher depth once you awaken the Ma'at faculty through the mantra and the different, you know, affirmations and meditation scripts, you know, and living the laws will teach you the laws a hundred folds. You see that meaning that one thing is to cogitate something intellectually, another thing is to love it and live it. You see that? Okay. And then now Heru is a whole different experience. There's a statement in the New Testament where it says to be in the world but not be of it. This is the faculty that, 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 is, that, that exists in the world but is not of it. You see that? What the, in the yogic tradition called the Herit Chakra, one of the 14, not seven, 14 chakras of the Kundalini body within you. You see that? So how to be in the world but not be caught up in it? And this is important because people, you know, that don't really understand spirituality, okay, uh, they, they tell people, oh, you need to get away from this world. You know, you, you need to stop enjoying things this world you shouldn't desire. You have to learn how to find that equilibrium. You see that? And it doesn't come from intellectual, you know, you know, studying or whatever, it comes from a faculty, Heru. When it's awakened within you, you will be able to live in this world without being corrupt by it. You see that? Heru Kuhuti, number five, you've had the, the hawk headed being with this spear and the cudgel. You see that? Okay, this faculty is corresponds to the power for you to cut away, is to do cold turkey. Remove yourself from the conditionings. And when you do that, you will find that it becomes very easy for you to live, you know, according to the laws of God. And from therefore being a defender of divine law, you will then now be able to rebound effectively from the transgressions of others. You see that you have to get to the point where you've got to understand that there are a lot of immature, undeveloped people in this world, so you cannot live a life that is free of wrongdoers. And some people are going to cause you losses, but if you respond to your losses that others, other people cause, if you respond to them according to the 11 laws of God, as taught in this course, you will bounce back. You see that? Even better. Let's go to the next slide. Okay, we have Heteru. We find this lady with the horns, with the solar globe in between the horns. Right in the right upper corner of the slide. You know, what does that solar globe in the horns represent? You see that? The solar globe in the middle of the horn 
represents solar energy, kundalini, ra force. Meaning that when you imagine, when you dwell joyfully on achieving a goal, carrying out a task, if you visualize it joyfully, if you respond joyfully in the actual life situations, you are nourishing your psyche with solar energy. You understand that? The power that makes that make your thoughts become reality, that make your visualization become reality is solar energy. 100% just like the sunlight that you get if you went out on a sunny day and received the rays from the sun. That is what you are generating within your mind when you visualize your person smiling and laughing in the midst of a difficulty. And when you visualize yourself enjoying, you know, achieving your goals and achieving divine goals, you are nourishing your being with chi, with kundalini energy, with raw force. You need to spend a couple of, I would say half an hour, at least every day. Set days aside when you might spend an hour, two or three, just going over and over, visualizing, living the laws of one of the uh, principles in the Mount um, 11 Laws course. And visualizing your person, you know, enjoying having what you want. You don't have it yet physically, but you can go into your imagination in trance and visualize yourself enjoying it. You see that? What you're doing is that you are giving solar energy to that image, giving it with the power to attract to you the thing that you want. This is the real power of attraction. You have to invigorate your images and your thoughts. You see that? With solar energy. Where do you, you know, so where, where's the sun within you? The solar energy, the soul, the solar galaxy within you, the center of it is in that part of your spirit and psyche from where you smile and laugh. You see that? And you can enhance it by using the proper aromatherapy if that corresponds to that part of the spirit. we we'll talk about that later, or go back to Medunchi um, Volume 1, where the mission was given. We have over here, we have Sebek that corresponds to your verbal intellect. And your verbal intellect is how you codify, you know, your convictions. When you're convinced that something is true, you empower it to, to manifest itself. Okay, so never accept convictions of things that you believe in okay, or that you hope or you have faith in because having faith is putting a trust in something that cannot be proven, okay? Laws, the 11 laws of God mm -hmm. are premises that you can prove through logical reasoning to be true. You see that? So learn, learn to reason from the 11 laws about your life, you see that? Is it true, is it true that peace is your nature? That peace is your uh, correct response to challenges, is it true? Well, scientific reason tells you that if you're not responding peacefully to a challenge in life, then you are going to be, you know, uptight, <clears throat> afraid, angry. You're going to worry. You're going to grieve. You see that. So when you are peaceful and you enjoy being peaceful, you are then energizing your psyche and your mind to heal you and to manifest your goals. These are verifiable facts. And these are the kind of thoughts that you need to live by. That's the Sebek factor in there. Okay, then we come to Oset. The lady is sitting with a throne uh, 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 on top of her head. She wears the throne, you see, on her head. You see, and she's nourishing a child. 
that throne means that aset, you see, is the enthronement of your power. It is queen over your life, meaning it is the power for you to change your mind, for you to change your persona, okay? If your person has a has taken on the image of a, a failed person or a person who is stuck on a negative behavior, learn about the truths of trance, going into trance with the image of a positive behavior, and you will find that with enough repetitions, especially in trance, or much more repetitions outside of trance, you will eventually change your personal your personal expression, your personality expression. Let's see that. Then we have 10, get the physical body, the physical world. Okay, you've been taught to think that the physical world is etched in stone. Okay, so that you think that what you failed, where you failed in the past, you know, defines who you are in the present and the future. No such thing. You know, life proceeds from the top on down, meaning that the higher parts of your spirit control the lower parts of your being. Your physical body, the physical world, is the lowest part of your being, the lowest part of your life and of your world. And it is the effect of every part of your being that came before it. So never use past experience to define your present, let alone your future. When you are in trance, visualizing, not verbalizing, when you are in trance, visualizing your person's enjoying an attained goal, you are at that moment in the ever present. Understand that, my beloved. You see that, learn to declare your will to be in the ever present mode of your imagination. So at this point, I yield the floor to you, my beloved, if you have any questions. All right. Wow. So um, let's see here. I would like to start while people are putting some questions in here, Shechem Shechem, back where you're speaking about uh, evolution and how the different parts of the brain evolved. And we're talking about hundreds of millions of years. Uh, can, you, can you share how to understand that in the context today where some people oppose evolution to creation, that if there is a divine creator, why this divine creator didn't just create us as we needed to be, but we, we you know, set up this process of evolution? Well, first of all, um, you know, the people who oppose evolution, right, are opposing science. And that is one of the problems in this world where there is a big sector in the world that have not yet learned to understand science, even though every day they benefit from science. <laughs> In other words, you know, they, they will pick up that cell phone, that mobile phone that was given to them by science, and they would think nothing that the, um, the, 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 the science that went, you know, behind the creation of that, you know, that instrument, you see that, uh, is the same source that is behind evolution. You see that. Um, I only, in other words, the step-by-step -step bringing forth of the different creatures in the world. You see that? Okay, if God wanted to create it at will one at a time, God would have done so. You see that? People who say, well, why didn't God make it in one step? They never say, well, why don't a baby come out in one step? Mm. They say that. In other words, you get pregnant, and the next day, boom, you have a full-grown you know, person with mustache and beard <laughs> and teeth. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. sit down to eat some tofu, don't need to drink milk. You know, um, those are things that, you know, I, I don't 
try to ex explain to people, you know, in other words, do your meditations, you know, work on becoming divine and those answers will come to you. I know the answer, but I'm not going to try to teach it to people. Mm -hmm. You see that? So Emmanuel uh, Favors, welcome, brother. He's on Facebook and he said, why do higher faculties, at that point we were just at the first slide, why do some have uh, animal depictions and some human or people? Well, the animal, that's a very good question. You see that? The animal depictions are just simply metaphors for certain aspects, you know, of um, the understanding of that faculty. If, and that's a very good question. If you find that the Tehute is associated with the ibis, you see that? Not because the wisdom faculty has anything to do with the behavior of the ibis. You see that? We find that the, the Tehute faculty, it gives us the ability to, uh, to have equilibrium in our thinking and in our life. Mm -hmm. You see that? So we find that ibises stand in pools of water, okay, on one leg for hours, in displaying their great ability to, 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 for equilibrium. You see that? So it's a metaphor for equilibrium, mm -hmm. you see? And, and then the ibis is also looking into the water for fish. It stands mobile without moving, which, you know, again, is metaphoric for meditating, you know, and being, you know, still and quiet, looking into what? Into the mind, into the psyche, for fish, meaning revelations. Mm -hmm. You see that? We have Heru, the hawk, right? Because, um, uh, which, and the, M, the, the, the focus of that hawk is the eye. You see that? Meaning uh, the will, which it represents, functions through, you know, um, visual intelligence, the visual part of the brain. You see that? Okay, and the hawk is symbolic of one of the great, the most the keenest high, you know, eyesight in nature. You see that? Mm. Eagles and hawks can see your prey two miles away. Mm. You see that? So that's symbolic and metaphoric of the Heru work. You have to be able to see very clearly all of the mindless things that come up through the psyche and the mind to be able to regulate it, to catch it. And that is, you know, and Heru faculty is the emblem of mindfulness meditation or men ebb, as it is called in Kemet. And we can go on and on and on. You follow what I'm saying? We have Sebek that has the ears symbolizing oral cogn cognition, meaning that if you heard something, it's hearsay. Not necessarily the truth. You have to verify it by seeing it. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. That's why the ears are very pointed and up in Sebek, because it's the verbal intelligence, which is a source of a lot of problems in people's lives. They repeat her you know, overheard thing. You heard somebody define man as a human being, not knowing that human means, human means earthly man. Humus means earth and man is, you know, so human is earthly man. So if I talk about an earthly man, there is an unearthly man or a spiritual man. Mm. But once you know the difference, stop calling yourself a human being. Because the earthly part of you is the, the animal past. So yeah, these are very beautiful symbols and metaphors that is used in the hieroglyphic system of Egypt. And you had the uh, those symbols on um, the Meduna tear cards as well. That's correct, because they speak to your psyche hmm. and the recesses of your mind. Okay, and Thandi Wei, this is a second question about reincarnation, so I putting hers up, it says, how does reincarnation relate to the comedic tree of life? Ah, uh, good, good question. Can you bring back up the four powers? Mm-hmm. Real quick. Up, up. There you go. All mm -hmm. right. These mm -hmm. four higher parts of spirit, right? 
okay, reside in what we call the, the higher part of the spirit. But we have to go to the Kemitic language itself, right? Oser, the Oser faculty resides in what we call a part of the spirit called the Ba. You see, the, the division spirit called the Ba. The um, Tehuse faculty, you know, refer uh, uh, resides in the Ku. And um, Seker, you know, resides, you know, in the second part of the spirit. You see that? So all of the, these part of the spirits, the higher part of the spirit are, you know, eternal, right? They do not, they, 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 they are not made of, you know, earthly matter or dissolvable matter. They are infinite and eternal in their existence. So that when you have awakened these four higher parts of your spirit and your consciousness now resides, you know, begins to take up residence it turned, you know, from that point on into the Oser faculty of the spirit. You, you understand that? Meaning the faculty of your divine residence is the Oser part of the faculty. Once you take up residence there, you see, since that part never dies and consciousness never dies, you are able to live eternally and come back at different times when you are needed on earth. You see that? Go to the next slide down. Okay, we have here the the uh, Ma'at Riguti and the Heru. Okay, so the in this faculty here, this part of the spirit, you see, we have the what we call the Ed <clears throat> part of the spirit. Okay, and that is where you are judge. You see that if you you are judge in the, the the Heru is judge in the Ma'at when you die, and if you fail the judgment. Then now let's go down lower. Next slide. Okay. The lower part with nucleus at Oset and Geb, these parts dissolve. You see, after you die. Okay. So if you stay, if your life was lived in this lower part of the spirit, which is where most people live their life. If, if let's say that you're living basically in this part of the spirit. Then know the Hedalu is all fun and games and entertainment. You know, Sebek is all intellectual things, making money, schemes and things of that nature. You know, uh, or said is, you know, yeah, if you're not dealing with the spiritually, or said is your, you know, your, your caring and your social life and things of that nature. And then the Geb is the physical pleasures and the things of this earth. So if this is where you live your life in this part of your spirit, you know, it dissolves. It doesn't, um, you do not take it into another life. You see that? So when you come back to earth, you know, you have no memory of a past life. You don't bring anything back from a past life. So it's just like there's no reincarnation. Go on up again. So when you live in this part of the spirit, you see that, and you pass initiation, Okay, this part is also dissolved, but then now you pass on to, let's go up again. Then you come in here, this part of the spirit, okay, here you're now living and in an eternal vehicle and you're able to bring back memories and or talents and skills from a past life. You see that? And the thing is, is that, you know, um, you know, life is, evolution is like a relay race, meaning, <clears throat> you know, if you understand the selfless module and selfless concept of life, okay, uh, spirituality is not every man and woman pulling themselves up from their own bootstrap. You have to lend somebody a bootstrap, help them to make one and help them to rise. So if you achieve the goal of evolution, which is to become an Oser, you see that at some point you will come back. You need to you need to come back to earth and subject yourself to the inequities and non nonsense and evil of people around you to bring this this the, sorry to bring the teachings back to people. So next next question.
Hello? What up? Can you read it? Okay, she's saying you spoke about several parts of the brain. Many people talk about the pineal gland and spiritual development. Does the pineal gland play any role in a uh, uh, person's spiritual development? Uh, the pineal, what you got to do, Sakepara, is this is the age of information. Go on the internet and read everything that you can read about the pineal gland and you will find that it does not play a major role in spiritual development. You see that? Okay, the pineal gland, you know, at one point during the early days of theos the theos theosophical teachings in the Western world, that people thought that the pineal gland was the seat of the Ajna Chakra, and that nonsense became established. But when you hear about these things, go on the internet, look it up. This is what I'm saying. The pineal gland has a lot to do with the, the absorption of light, you know, darkness and things of that nature. Okay. Um, but it has, it is not what people think it is spiritually. You mm -hmm. see that. And a follow up on what you just spoke about is it possible to still go through spiritual evolution after death? Ah, what a wonderful question. What a wonderful question. The answer is yes, but not by yourself. You see that? Mm. In other words, in ancient Kamet and some on the uh, Tibetan and things in Asia and other parts of the world, okay, when a person dies, you know, every 40 days for, for nine for nine cycles, there is um, ceremonies that are held to guide the deceased to review their life on earth, this time in relationship to living the 11 laws. You see that? So nine 40-day period of ceremonies, and we, and we do that for all our deceased here in Osiris society. When a member in good standing dies, you know, uh, we do a, a awakening ceremony, which is, you know, four days after the person dies. You know, because the first four days after they, the person is like an assume. They're not yet aware that they died. And they wake up to the fact that they are dead four days after death. And then now uh, counting from that day, every 40 days, every 40th day, we do a uh, ceremony for them, you know, scaling up the tree. We start with Oset, move up to Sebek, move up to Hedero. So because before you come to earth, you are shown, you're given you know, a preview of what your life will be, you know, and depending on how, you know, uh, if you were spiritually endowed before you came to earth, you are shown what laws, you know, you need to observe and so on. So after a person dies, you know, if they have been a member in, in good standing and have been doing initiation work or whatever, we take them through that ceremony that will help them to stabilize themselves in the inner planes, find the peace that people wish upon the death but do not confer because they don't know what to do. They say, oh, may you rest in peace. Well, you know, uh, the same way your words didn't make things happen, <laughs> you need a ceremony. Mm -hmm. So that is how we help the deceased further the evolution and to come back to better evolutionary, to better living you know, situations when they come back again. So Shechem, Shechem, as you're speaking about um, some karmic implications of how we live our lives as individuals, does this also apply to groups of people? Or how are we to understand when we see people by the thousands or even hundreds of thousands of people uh, wiped out in war or subjected to certain kind of conditions, cutting their lives short, uh, being in um, not plagues, but uh, famines and things like that. How, how, how do we understand those individuals that really didn't have an opportunity or did they to, to further their incarnation? Well, you know, uh, we live our life as social groups, just not as individuals, you see that? So when a social group, you know, um, <clears throat> 
can experience, can do something wrong or experience wrong being done to them, right? It's not part, becomes part of the group karma. You see that? And those are things that are worked out in the inner planes, you know, uh, and affect their reincarnation and so on. And of course, we'll have to go back <clears throat> and study very carefully, you know, how these people as a group live their lives to know exactly what went on. And unfortunately, this study is not around. Mm. You see that? So for those who have said that the condition of black people, for example, having gone through the Ma'afa and transatlantic uh, Holocaust and our position in the world was due to some uh, sin or some um, behavior that put us in this position, what would you say? Uh, rubbish. <laughs> you know, what was done to us was not done because of, you know, sins. You see that? If you want to understand what was done to us, look at what we have done since then for the world. Mm. You see that? We were brought into a situation, okay, that to put us in a position to bring to the world's attention that if you're going to claim democracy, we're going to make sure you're going to live it. Mm. If you're going to change spirituality, we're going to make sure that you understand it and live it by us living it and so on. So that is why we are where we are, to play a role in the upliftment of the world. You know, we were not, you know, go back in the history of, of Africa. You know, you never find ancient Egypt, which is the primordial civilization of black people doing things, the, 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 the wickedness that other nations did to their people and to other people. Mm. You see that? So people who made that statement about, oh, no, study history. That's why I wrote a book, you know, um, you know, not out of Greece, a history book, to help people understand their black history and, and learn to read your history through the eyes of black authors like myself and check anti Diop, you know, Henry Clark and so forth. All right. Well, Shekin, Shekin, I think we could talk all night. It's 930. It's up to you. <laughs> well, you know, I have another counseling coming on in about 20 minutes. <laughs> well, this has been fantastic. Uh, I think we should put some fire in the chat here. Right. If you enjoyed this evening with Shekin or Shekin, Ra'u Nefer, Amen, Master Teacher, and um, the creator of the Ma'at, 11 Laws of Health, Wealth, and Success. If you haven't already, you want to get your copy and start doing these meditations. And we're going to continue with two webinars uh, next week to continue to elucidate the power of this system. So uh, a lot of appreciation, a lot of love uh, on Facebook, on YouTube, in our uh, webinar room. And Shekhar Shekhar, we want to thank you again for taking this time and for your life of service. And we look forward to continuing this great learning. So on behalf of everyone, I want to give, bid you a good night and say Anetcharak, Shekhar Shekhar, Ram Nefer, Amen. and blessings to each and every one of you. All right. Tua'u. Some of you had some um, some other questions as far as uh, where to get books and things like that. If you want to hang on just a moment, I can give you some links and some answers to that. And wow, what a night, huh? So announcement number one, let's see here. If you enjoyed this webinar, uh, you want to go to SoundWise if you're not already a member Soundwise, that's the name of, of the app. Uh, it's a free app, app that you can get on your uh, Google Play Store, on your iPhone. Uh, you can have it on your tablet. And you can, upload, you can download this app, and then you go and search for Comedic Legacy. That's K-A-M-I-T-I-C. Or just type in Ma'at, and you'll find us. 
And when you're there, you'll see the free uh, podcast uh, record. You'll have this recording later tonight for you to study. I know there's going to be a lot of studying on this one. Uh, and you'll also get access to the other webinars that have been done. And you'll also be part of our network so we can notify you every time there's a new um, program that comes out. While you're there, you can also sign up. Oh, there we go. So these are the Committed Spirituality free webinars on SoundWise. While you're there, you can also sign up for that uh, Four Powers of Your Divine Spirit. You can start there or you can get the entire course uh, if you want to get all uh, 11 modules and it's actually cheaper that way. Believe me, you're going to, once you get started, you're going to want them all. Uh, and we have a special running right now where if you buy the uh, entire package, let me just show you that. Let's see here. So you can start with the four powers of your divine spirit is $59.95. It includes the four full foundational modules. That's Amen, Oser, Tehuti, and Sekert. And what you're going to get with that is instructions on how to meditate, a discourse on each of the faculties or the, the faculty that you uh, is in that bundle, right? Um, the mantras to awaken the faculty and a guided meditation track to work with. Right. So in this case, you'll have four of those, Amen, Oser, Seker, and Tehuti, and you get that for $59. That also gives you access to member-only webinars, right? So this is a webinar uh, that we're broadcasting to everyone, to the public. We also have private webinars uh, for course members. So as you're going through the material in the course, we can be laser-focused on, you know, exactly what uh, material you're working with and answer your questions, give you that one-on-one -on -one guidance uh, that you might need. And uh, you also get a discount when you complete the rest of the uh, course. So you can do that, or you can start uh, right at the full package, which is you get all 11 modules. That's a complete course. <clears throat> you still get the member uh, only webinars. And you'll get two bonuses. You'll get the free Ma'at 11 Laws audiobook now. That's a special that we're running through the end of this month. The free, you get Ma'at 11 Laws. That's the entire book. It's an audio book. You get that for free. That's a $30 value. And you also get a Zazen breath training module. Um, so that's about $40 in free bonuses if you go ahead and sign up for the whole course. Right. So um, make your way over to Ma'at11laws.com and you can pick up, uh, you can get yourself registered for the course. All right. Uh, someone asked about classes in localities. Um, you can go to, again, Ma'at11laws.com or let me see. Try that one more time. Uh, let's see here. Uh, you can go to our link tree and you can see our locations around the country. Let's see. There was another question here. 
Okay, and answers to all your other questions, you can email us. Go to ma'at11laws.com. Um, you can communicate with us on our Facebook pages as well. So thank you so much for being with us tonight. See you Tuesday and enjoy the rest of your solstice. Peace and blessings. So our ancestors knew the truth. They knew what to do, what to do. Our ancestors were scientists, the yes, scientists of the spirit. Our ancestors were wise, wise. to observe the solstice time. time. Our ancestors knew the time, time. to awaken genius in our minds. Solstice is the time. Solstice is the time to meditate so deep. Solstice is the time to slumber and sleep. Solstice is the time the sun stands still. Solstice is the time for peace and goodwill. Solstice is the time to meditate so deep. Solstice is the time to slumber and sleep. Thank you.